Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 30th. Today we're going to take a look at this incoming system for the Pacific Northwest and we'll look at some detail on how this is going to impact us for the next few days as this cold air moves over the region. And then we'll take a brief look at the rest of the country. Some Arctic air will be sliding down to the lower 48 here into early next week. And then we'll take a look at the extended forecast for the Pacific Northwest. So jumping right into things here, check out this frontal system as it's coming on shore for Washington. It's going to spread precipitation through western Washington, Oregon, the Cascades, and eventually we'll bring some snowfall totals through the Rocky Mountains there, the Cascades of Washington, Oregon, and some very cold Arctic air is going to be sliding down out of the north, mainly east of the Rockies there, and it's bringing some high wind watches and warnings for areas of Montana. And then you'll hear about the next snowmaker out for the Midwest if you haven't already. And then some pretty cold temperatures dropping all the way down into Texas again. Uh, not quite as cold as last year, but still pretty chilly for Texas standards. And if we look into the watches, warnings, and advisories going on, high wind watch and some warnings for higher terrain there through Montana. We got winter weather advisories for areas of Idaho, western Montana, Rockies, Cascades, Oregon, and Washington. Still a few air stagnation advisories for western Oregon, eastern Oregon, but this incoming system should help clear that out a bit. And pretty chilly temperatures down into Florida. Watch out for the falling iguanas out of the trees down there. So check that out if you want to know more. Strong winds late Sunday and Monday. This is through western Montana. Pretty powerful Arctic front's going to blast down here, mostly east of the Rockies. And you can see gusts of 75 miles per hour, Rocky Mountain front and eastern Glacier County. And then you've got gusts of 60 elsewhere. So pretty powerful system. A lot of snow at elevation there. So if you're going through the passes or you're... you're just traveling through the area out there. B, have a heads up on that. Wind gusts in excess of 60 miles per hour possible with a lot of snow falling and very chilly temperatures. And check this out. Wednesday's probability of zero or below. So really high probability that you're going to be below zero out there. So nice Arctic blast coming there. And they talk about for Missoula, Montana, some possible freezing rain in the valleys as cold air is trapped as the system moves over. And of course, snow will be the order of the day above 4,000 feet. And this is Sunday into Monday. And you can see the Arctic front here painted by the Missoula National Weather Service forecast discussion, gust of 40 miles per hour. And you can see the Arctic front possibly making it down all the way towards I-90. So heads up if you're traveling eastbound on I-90 through Washington and Idaho, snow in the passes. And of course, watch out for the Washington Cascades, Stevens and Snoqualmie has too, are expected some pretty good snowfall amounts coming up with this system moving through. And just a highlight of the winds moving through eastern Washington as well, too. Some gusty winds on the east slopes of the Cascades as this front slides through the area. And you can see those snowfall totals through the Cascades. Some in, there in northeast Washington. And a bit of freezing rain is possible for today, Sunday, through some portions of eastern Washington, I-90. doesn't take much to slicken up the roads with freezing rain. And you can see how the travel will be difficult going eastbound on I-90 there. And they're calling for that moderate mountain snow again here, Cascades, Idaho Mountains, freezing rain potential. So heads up if you're traveling eastbound out of Seattle or anywhere in western Washington through the passes today. And here's that storm you're going to hear about through the Midwest. Probability of snow greater than four inches, pretty good. This goes all the way back into Colorado, New Mexico, and portions of the Texas Panhandle through Oklahoma, all the way out towards the Great Lakes. And some ice accumulation is possible too, all the way down into Texas. As we talked about some chilly air getting down into there again this year. So taking a look at what's going on now, you can see we've got this system coming down for the Pacific Northwest here. Here's that East Coast storm finally moving up and out of the region there. Put this into motion. You can see that clipping the Pacific Northwest. It's going to bring us some chilly air, but not, a, not an Arctic blast for western portions of Washington, Oregon, or British Columbia. Possibly some low snow levels behind the frontal system with the chilly air on Monday or Tuesday. And you can see that swing through there, and it really gets Montana pretty good there. And you can see that in the Arctic air kind of overspreads down into the region there. And then we get some ridging back over the Pacific Northwest here. So we'll see how that goes, how this is going to evolve. We'll take a look at this in more detail tomorrow. But a system moves through again on Friday there. And then as we look into the further into the extended here, you can see another system impacts the region the following Monday. So it doesn't look like a death ridge setting up but we'll look at that in more detail as the days come by. 
And here is the low, here's the surface pressure map. You can see that system just kind of clips us here. And as the frontal system goes by, it's going to bring some convergent precipitation bands through the Puget Sound. We'll look at that in a little more detail here. But you can see a pretty potent storm moving through Montana here. And Alberta Clipper it just slides through. It's going to hammer the Dakotas there pretty good and go through Minnesota as it moves up to the northeast. And you can see this Arctic air mass just marching down through the lower 48, bringing cold temperatures all the way down into Texas as looking for some snowfall here through the midwest as this arctic air makes its way south and here is surface temperatures so let's put this into motion here look at this warm air out here getting some chinook wind you know it warms things up pretty good on the east slopes of the rockies out into montana there but then watches this arctic air slides down the east portions of the rockies there look at how much they cool off as it's just blast down and you see the Diur diurnal variations here as the temperatures heat up during the day and the Arctic air maintains its way all the way down into Texas. Check that out. Some chilly temperatures all the way down into Texas. They're almost to the Gulf Coast and really cold Arctic air up there through Canada, mostly east of the Rockies. The Rockies save the Pacific Northwest from any kind of major Arctic intrusion in this round. And here we go. Here's the temperatures at 2,500 feet. You can kind of show a little bit more clearly the extent of that cold air. You can see our system moving through the Pacific Northwest here, this chilly air aloft as it slides down through our region. And you can see the bulk of that stays up over the Yukon and just east of the Rockies as this air slides down. It tries to seep over the higher terrain here, but doesn't do a great job of it. And you can see how it just penetrates far down into Texas here. And you see the really cold air up over the Hudson Bay and all the way out to the East Coast again on into next weekend. And you can see how it doesn't really, you know, we don't have many systems moving by. A weak system goes by, and then perhaps another one later into the period for the Pacific Northwest, but no cold Arctic air is in our immediate future. Just a little taste of it coming up with this system as it moves through now, but this Arctic air took up, or polar air took a long track over water, so it's gonna be modified somewhat as it moves into our area. And here's another closer look here. Let's look at this. This again is at 2,500 feet. You can see the extent of that Arctic air blasting all the way down into Texas here. Here's the surface map, which doesn't show it quite as clearly, but you can see that cold air move down through Montana, the Dakotas, and eventually it makes its way all the way down into Texas there, all the way out to the Gulf Coast. So here's now, you can see the system, there's the frontal system moving through the region now here. And you can see our mountain snows going on, Olympics all the way through British Columbia, nice mountain snowfalls coming up here. You see that get down through Western Oregon as rain in the valleys, snow in the higher terrain. And then you can see this low pressure bring that snowfall down through Montana. And they call this an Alberta Clipper, just kind of rides the border there as it heads on east. And you can see the precip remains showery as we get precip um, Convergent bands are going to move through the area here. And you can see the Cascade snowfall going on into early next week. And then another weak system move across north of us again. And then yet another system into next weekend. But they're not, you know, they're, they're pretty garden variety. They're not exceptionally strong. This is a, a little bit of a deeper low moving into B, BC there. But this is getting way out to the extended. But it does show some systems coming in through our region. So not a big death ridge, a big, huge fog dome that we had recently as of right now. It doesn't look like that. So here's the NAM 3 km this morning's run. You can see this frontal system here. It's going to bring some good winds southeasterlies through up towards Whidbey Island, San Juans. Then you can see the westerlies charging down the Strait of Juan de Fuca here. Some good winds on the Oregon coast. You can see these westerlies getting all the way down to Whidbey Island here on into this afternoon. Some pretty strong winds showing up there. We'll look at that in a little more detail here in a minute. And you can see these strong western, southwesterlies moving across the Rockies there. And then you'll see that cold Arctic air, just big wind shift as that northerly Arctic air just comes blowing down into Montana there. And you can see how as the front passes, you get some powerful winds also on the east slopes of the Cascades as this frontal system moves through here. It's going to be pretty windy in portions of eastern Washington. So taking a look at, you can see the Arctic air show up here too. You see how it's it's relatively mild out here east of the Rockies right now. And as, the, as you go into the future here, you'll see that Arctic air just charge down east of the Rockies. 
And you can kind of see our northwest flow here through the Pacific Northwest. And that's going to bring us showers off and on into early next week. So just looking at a, a generic wide scale snowfall map, you can see that old system moving out off the east coast well up towards Greenland. And you can see our Cascade snow totals here going up as we get into Monday morning as the Rockies start getting their snowfall here during the day Monday. And a good snowfall band there through Canada. So we're going to get some pretty decent snowfall amounts through the Cascades all the way down into Oregon with this next system. The Olympics picking up a decent amount too. Vancouver Island, uh, higher elevations will be getting in on that action too. And this again, let's look at... Now let's look at a little more detail here what's going to come as we go into the future here. This is convective available potential energy. I've got my eye on a couple of convergent zone activity potentials here going on into Monday and Tuesday. This is Monday. Let me bring that so it goes to hour to hour. You can see this area of instability there on the coast and up north for Woodby Island. And it overspreads the region here as we get into Monday afternoon. With some convergent zone activity, we might get an isolated lightning strike somewhere through the Puget Sound here. Some of this shows a more progressive zone moving down over towards Seattle. And you can see that convergent zone signature here just over Seattle there. And then we move into Tuesday. You'll notice some instability is still around and we get more of a northwest flow out of this. Some Even some convergent zone off the, the Vancouver Island there. The northwest winds come down the strait here and the strait of Juan de Fuca and they can meet in here. And bring another convergent zone and you can see that instability during the af about noon into the afternoon as this is more progressive convergent zone activity will move past seattle down towards even towards tacoma here on tuesday afternoon and of course this will bring a lot of mountain snow with these bands wherever they set up here's a detailed look at the winds coming here this back up here and we'll look at this as the frontal system comes through you can see these southwesterlies blowing across Whidbey up towards the san juans and if we go into the afternoon here you can see that westerly surge just explode down the strait of juan de fuca here and just impact areas of port angeles squim um, and really get into western Whidbey island there at this point and you can see kind of a convergence of signature where you get the lowland winds over the central sound. And as we move this into Monday afternoon, this is when we've got some instability around. So we'll get a convergence zone activity possibly anywhere from Seattle up towards Whidbey Island and north of Everett towards Marysville. So checking out the European here too. This is something I watch at times too. This is lightning flash density. I, this is just kind of another thing I look at to see if there's potential for lightning. And it shows this coming up here. It's about noon on Monday, 1 o'clock. It shows some lightning potential. It's been showing this for a few runs now. So it's something I watch for when we get convergent zone potential. I look for lightning activity there. And it's been showing up for a few runs. So I have hope that there could be an isolated lightning strike in the Puget Sound convergent zone coming up Monday or Tuesday afternoon. So just taking a look, we'll look at the extended here in a minute and just taking a look. I talked about this in the live stream yesterday. You can see our drought issues going on. Still Montana, Oregon, and Washington have some pretty areas of extreme or severe drought going on. So we still need that snowfall, especially for eastern portions of Washington and Oregon. That snow that we got will help a little bit for eastern portions of the Cascades there. We got a pretty good snowfall there a few weeks ago. Um, but you can see we still need this precipitation in eastern portions of the state. So we are not out of the drought threat yet for eastern Washington, Oregon. You can see western Washington is not under any threat as of now. Check out the landslide index. Remember we were talking about this when we were getting the atmospheric rivers coming through the region here. Everybody's fine now. We've had a nice period where we got no heavy rain and now we can relax about landslides for the most part. I mean, it's still possible it could happen from what we had you know, that precipitation we had going on was pretty excessive, but if it hasn't happened by now, we're probably in the clear at, until at least the next atmospheric rivers make their way into the region here. So here is last night's European run. Actually, this is from this morning. Let's go to the control and let's check out, well, let's see how far this goes out here. This goes out pretty far. So we'll take a look at this. This is the ensemble control run of this morning's European model and you can see that system swinging down through the Pacific Northwest here and some ridging out here and then this blast through Montana into the Dakotas and then you'll see that Arctic air that spreads down south over the lower 48 
And we would get a return of the ridging here for a bit. It's a little more transient if we have a system coming through on Friday. And then more ridging and then perhaps another system that the European has been showing in the extended on into next weekend into early next week. So hopefully that'll keep us away from this huge fog dome that we had recently and keep the air stirred up a bit more. So yeah, if you guys are liking these videos, click like and subscribe and keep leaving comments and feedback and I'll do my best to comply with what you guys are asking for. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. We'll take a closer look at what that convergence zone activity will look like Monday and Tuesday and what kind of mountain snows we can expect in some more detail also. So I will talk to you guys later. Thanks.